But I really think that when you have an innovative teacher who understands about relationships and how important that is, that children will rise and they will find something that they are passionate about and they will find that they are good at something. And that's what we need to promote, you know, the, the individual individuality of each child and um, their strengths. And, um, you know, it's sometimes I think there's just not enough time in the day to do that. Uh, And and maybe even sometimes there's like, there's such an emphasis on the wrong thing that we have to, do you know what I mean? Like if you look at, for example, the, one of the arguments is parents, Parents want their kids to, you know, they're all about the GPA, going to college, things like that. Mm-hmm. I actually don't necessarily believe that. I actually, I think parents want what's best for their kids. And sometimes they're, they're not, like for lack of a better term off the top of my head, they're brainwashed to think that everything is about grades. And I know that my parents just want what's best for me. And if I actually, to be honest with you, I've written several books. I've, you know, I've done well in my career. If you based my 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 life on what my GPA was in school, I would have done terribly, right? Like I wasn't a very strong academic student. I was a very smart kid, but I was mm-hmm. like smart with relationships. Uh, you know, teachers actually, I had I had developed. You know, teachers knew that um, if I like, I was I had a pretty quick wit. So even at a young age, like I could you know really you know make a teacher's day very hard. Mm-hmm. And some of them understood. They're like. You know, maybe like we got to teach this guy how to use this for good instead of evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like, like he he actually is very quick on his feet, but this he's not necessarily using it in the best way. Mm-hmm. And so I think I think part of it, as you said, uh, and I actually just wrote a blog post on this, is that we don't want we don't need kids to be good at the same thing. We need every mm-hmm. kid to be good at something, right? Yes. And and yes. finding that and part of that too. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. like if you look at and this is what I was talking about the parents. Um, a lot of the best teachers I've ever worked with were terrible students. But if I if I hired them based solely on their GPA, a lot of teachers I know who had very strong GPAs were not mm-hmm. necessarily great teachers. And so, like, it, it, there is a there is a disconnect there. And I think we have to kind of mm-hmm. understand that there are doors opening for them. Um, yes. The other thing that you said about test prep that I, I think is really interesting is a lot of schools say that you know our our school our you know our school is over test. And I'm like, do they over test because of government or because your school district makes you take practice tests so they can do really good on the test? Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we we actually compound that issue, not necessarily. And I'm not saying that's true in all places, but mm-hmm. I really appreciate that because I know you and I have a lot of similar thinking on really mm-hmm. helping kids and understanding them as individuals. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's something really important. And so, like, for anyone that's listening. Um, you know, go through your career, what are like maybe like some strategies that you either saw as an administrator, uh, you did as a teacher that really helped, you know, a, a student that was struggling to actually not necessarily do better in that subject that you were teaching, mm-hmm. but just to do better, you know, do better mm-hmm. in, in whatever field. What are some things that you've, you've seen up throughout your career that really were beneficial in that? Mm-hmm. Well, I mentioned relationships and I think that's, probably the most important thing. Um, You know, truthfully, George, you talk about yourself as a student, and I would probably Mm -hmm. have loved you as a student because I actually (laughs) liked the Rascal Boys. I mean, I did. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I I saw them as being creative, and I I think that sometimes we do our our boys a disservice in school, you know, expecting them to Mm -hmm. sit still and and I shouldn't say just boys because I'm sure it's the same with girls. But I think girls somehow they they are a little more compliant, I guess, in certain ways. But I I really think that um, when as a as a teacher, giving kids choices for one thing, mm-hmm. you know, not expecting them all to um, to do the same thing at the same time in the same way, but having choice boards or having, you know, rotations so that they could do different things and they could work on projects with their, um, with others who are interested in the same kinds of things. 